Patty is upstairs in the yellow wallpapered room. She is nursing hours old Clover Ann, seven pounds, six ounces. The sun is high over the Shongun Ridge, the swooning scent of the overgrown lilac at the corner of the barn. Kale and Addie and Nancy and I are playing some clumsy version of tag in the back field when I fall flat on my back with a gasp, the kids giggling like I'm clowning, dancing all around, jumping on me. But the truth is, I can't catch my breath, can't laugh with them, the desperate wheeze of a two-pack-a-day addiction to lucky strikes seizing my lungs. So I close my eyes, waiting for breath to return. And in that breathless moment at the edge of life, children's laughter swirling all around, I'm thinking how our family doc stepped aside when the baby girl crowned the night before. How I sidled in between her mother's thighs, held my palm gently against her tiny skull, received her into my trembling hands, the sweet muck of birth on my fingers, then on my bare arms, on my lips, the scent of life still seeping through my pores as I lay on my back in the field, children squealing, and when I come up to air, I am breathing, but still breathless from that baby's first breath. A few hours later, after I toss the pack of luckies into the garbage can by the barn, Clover is sleeping, wrapped in her mother's arms in the upstairs bedroom. My mother is downstairs with the other kids who are waiting for their dinner. I am sitting in My Hero Pizzeria in Main Street in New Paltz, fiddling with my wedding ring turning it around and around, pondering this life, this unplanned life, this unplanned life full of grace, this unplanned, undeserved life full of grace, this unplanned, undeserved, inexplicable life full of grace, this frightening and awesome, unplanned and undeserved, wholly inexplicable life full of grace. Four kids in eight years, turning and turning the gold band, then slipping it over the knuckle, baby soft flesh underneath. And as I bring my palm up to my face, the weight of her still cradled in my arms, I inhale the birth scent in that pale and tender circle of skin, the two of us, one wailing, the other holding his breath. 42 years later, Patty and I are upstairs in a different home, a warm yellow house deep in the woods, six empty bedrooms, walls cluttered with photographs of an inexplicable life full of grace. Three more children have come into our lives, 16 grandchildren. The old brick house where Clover was born has been sold and resold two or three times. The placenta I buried the next day on Coffee Lane is long ago alchemized into soil. The birch tree I planted over the placenta was blown over in a storm 27 years later, transformed into firewood and a talisman on a cradle I made for that sweet baby's first baby. And the pizzeria is now a Vietnamese restaurant. Yet, I still feel the weight of the infant I held in my hands that June evening. The scent of her birthing still on the baby's soft skin under that wedding band. Now a golden amulet that has not come off this finger for 42 years. 
And these days, when I lay down in the grass under Bonacue Crag, a mile or so as the peregrine falcon flies from that yellow wallpapered bedroom, chest rising and falling, lungs clear and pink as a newborn, I close my eyes, hear the ancient wheezing, children squealing all around, Clover's first yow, grateful for the glorious and frightening reminder of the sweet breathlessness of this unexpected, wholly inexplicable life we live. Thank you.